Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, can you hear me all right? Awesome. Um, okay, so uh, WebScan version 6. Uh, show of hands, how many people have heard of WebScan? WebScan version 5, version 4? Okay. Uh, how many people have a technical background? Developers, engineers. Awesome. Actually, this is the, the this is the right thing because yeah, the, these are the kind of people I want to speak to. And uh, perfect. So um, my talk today will have a combination of basic things uh, like like what is software, what is software composition analysis, and so on. And depending on how it goes. We can either go deeper into the technical side of things, or we can go broader and talk about uh, a lot of things, right? And um, DevScan, uh, we are very new to OWASP. Uh, we joined last year, thanks to Sam. Uh, it was just my hobby project in my laptop, literally. And uh, uh, last week, I won a grant from NLNet Foundation from the uh, European Commission. Uh, via the NGI Zero Fund uh, to continue to uh, improve DevScan. So uh, thank you so much for this opportunity, this great forum, and, and everything. Um, my presence here today is sponsored by Backslash, so I have their T-shirt on. Um, I can't ask the government for money for travel, so some private funding. Um, uh, most people don't know me. That's that, that's reality. I'm not a celebrity. I'm not an AI guy or or Sam or you know Andrew. Or, um, but uh, these are some of the projects I built and open sourced over the years. Uh, so A B C D, uh, Atom, Blint, uh, C D Exchange, Cyclone D X, and then today's talk on on DevScan. So uh, even if you don't know me, if you come across my tools, yeah, now you see me. Um, and and this is my first conference actually this year. I was uh, busy working on DevScan version six. Uh, yeah, and I never had time to uh, travel. So some of the things you're going to see is exclusive. I've, I've not shared, I've not told anyone, right? And um, I was actually working on DevScan version six before version five. Crazy. Uh, I was trying to do too many things. The uh, uh, we're a we're a small team. We have three leaders on DevSkin project: myself, Caroline, and Tim. And uh, we wanted to rethink software composition analysis. They're trying to rethink software composition analysis, all of it, right? And um, and we realized that's a lot of work. So we had to launch DevSkin version five last year with reachability analysis. Uh, show of hands, how many people know about reachability analysis in SCA and, and, and super cool, right? Um, so yeah, it, uh, it became a success. I got a lot of users, a lot of downloads, some government and so on. And, uh, and then that gave them a nice excuse to again think about version six. Let's continue because we have uh, version five is, uh, which is working out and, 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 and so on. So the agenda is yes, uh, software composition analysis, uh, and then, and then uh, I'll, I'll show some of the things that we've already done, that is already working, some feedback, and I will also show what we are thinking in the roadmap, and it'll be nice to keep it interactive. So, because some of the things we, we are trying to do are like super cool, that it'll be nice to get a feedback on, you know, whether we are thinking in the right direction and, and, and so on, make it very interactive. And all of these are free open source or entire work, so, uh, there are no pitches or uh, anything. Um, actually, I, I, I got this toy with me. Um, and I, I thought it'll be easier to explain software with a toy, right? Because often uh, it's very difficult to explain what is a software. Um, so I thought I'll use something simpler. So this, I, I just found my son's toy. And um, is this a toy? Uh, or uh, can, do you want to check? Is this a toy? Yeah. Okay. Here. Okay. Uh, yeah. How do you know? How do, how do you know it's a toy? <laughs> it's not a toy. Okay. Tell me about it. It can be easily destroyed. 
yeah, software can be destroyed. We have the smartest people here. Uh, I actually got this for my son, and I thought this was a toy. Uh, and then uh, we all were excited. We were putting it together. Uh, but unfortunately, because I had a carpet floor, uh, this didn't work. But it turns out, this is the toy. To use this car, you need a mobile app. And the mobile app can, comes with such cool features like AR kit, augmented reality. So even if you don't have this physical toy, the mobile app will allow you to pay, place the car wherever you want and drive the car with the mobile phone. That my son was actually playing with the mobile phone, placing the cars in obscure locations, right? Now, if you ask me as a parent, is this toy safe? I will actually tell you, put a screen time on your phone. Right? The same way, when you say software, the software seen by a developer is completely different to the software seen by the end user, is completely different to the software seen by a, another software, like a security tool. Right? Um, so often your security tools, your processes could be scanning the wrong thing actually. <laughs> While your end users and attackers are, yeah, targeting something else completely uh, different. So uh, that is, uh, that is software. It, uh, it turns out, uh, it is an experience. It is a digital experience. Right? Um, a software is multiple repositories. A software could be Multiple services, multiple constituent, constituent points. Uh, um, for example, who can see the Apache library in this toy? So it turns out uh, they have an Apache library called Minute. So this has a microcontroller with uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Uh, and uh, they use the Apache Minute project uh, for the Bluetooth driver's track. And I, I know this because uh, I used actually DevScan to uh, scan this project. And uh, yeah, this is the best bomb it came up with. And uh, you can see uh, Bluetooth low energy related stuff and, 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 and so on. And uh, I also used uh, DevScan to actually scan the mobile app. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, it found a lot of things. Yeah, this app uses Bluetooth cameras, blah, 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 and then and the software bill of materials. So um, people think software bill of materials is just component names and version, but it's not. It, you, can, you can make it as detailed, as depth, as useful for various personas, right? For example, uh, a, a bill of materials with license is useful for license complaints people. A bill of materials with such in-depth call stack evidence, symbol evidence, occurrence evidence is useful for you know security people like us and 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 so on. So that is the benefit benefit of Cyclone DX software bill of materials. So it is not a buzzword. It is not a checkbox. It is an intermediate representation that can be used for multiple uh, multiple thing. And uh, what I just demonstrated is. Uh, Producing a software for real world people. Okay? If somebody does depth scan if an I car, they expect results. Depth scan if an I, this mono repo, polyglot, Java, JavaScript, Python, they expect results. They, they don't, they don't actually care about what is in the mono repo. How do I build this software? How do I do this? Right? They expect results. They expect, of course, high quality results with low false positives because, you know, nobody has time and, and so on. And, of course, they want reachability analysis, right? How, how many people can reach via the mobile phone this car and, and so on. So building a very nice, uh, rich software composition analysis need the security tool to both go deeper into the stack and, and broader. Essentially, it has to start understanding uh, the the semantics, the application, the the full context, not just the not just the software code context, but software bill of materials, the library context. If the application use any containers, the container related con context, operating system, OBOM, uh, any cryptography used, 
uh, it turns out this uh, driver has four cryptography algorithms. So very soon, Sidhikshan can actually generate CBOM for this toy. Right? So there's, uh, there's a lot of things we can do uh, uh, when it comes to SCA. And the ideal tool should mimic how the users would experience the software. Um, very high quality focus. It should go both deeper and 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 broader. Um, now, now let's come to composition. So I said composition is constituents, right? But like software, as you can figure, there is no fixed definition, right? Somebody, some people might say this is the toy, or this with Bluetooth, with Wi-Fi, with internet, plus the mobile app is the toy, you know? The, the const composition, the constitution parts, it depends really, right? There's no fixed thing, fixed definition. So for example, your uh, software composition could actually differ based on the product life cycle. So when you scan your application before you build, while you build, after you build, and, and so on, the comp components, the, the various components, right, constituents, as seen by the software that is analyzing, will, will be different. So for example, um, we took uh, uh, an open source project. So this is uh, Ghost OpenCMS. Uh, it's, a, it's a very famous Node.js based uh, content management system. And um, we produce an SBOM with CDXGen before we built the Ghost application, right? So based on the log files and everything. And then we built the Docker image. And then we uh, generated an SBOM with CDXGen of the Docker image, right? And then we produced a nice uh, BOM diff tool that will show the difference in compositions. And uh, what we found was uh, uh, before you build, uh, the number of frameworks used by the developer for various purposes, there are 261 frameworks, right? They are using a lot of, like Babel is for dev development, some, some Ember plugins, which is a framework, uh, some jQuery, some React, so they have uh, a mixture of stuff and so on. But after the application gets built, bundled, tree shaken, uh, compressed into a container, uh, the number of application frameworks is a lot smaller. And suddenly we see some frameworks not even present in the, in the pre-build phase, right? Like, like, like the lexical member. So there are some additional components, additional uh, parts being injected into the built image uh, to make, you know, the final uh, uh, deployment image. Uh, in, in case this, in, in, in case of this example, a container image, right? And uh, it is not unusual if your uh, application has various styles of distribution, like binary, zip file, installers, and so on. Again, the constitution constituents will 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 be vary. So, uh, so there is no such thing as a software composition analysis result because the composition itself will will differ based on uh, when you scan in the life cycle, right? It will also differ based on your uh, your deployment profile, right? Uh, maybe during development you need more dev tools. Maybe during testing you need test related stuff. Uh, maybe in production you will have uh, telemetry related uh, things, but not uh, testing and tracing related uh, libraries and so on. So uh, there is no such thing as I can scan the application once, get the SCA result, and call it a day because you are, you, you, we should start thinking about, uh, composition. And then lastly, precision and recall of the tools. So, um, uh, uh, for a same tool to be precise for all sort of life cycles, all sort of, sort of environments, yes, I would love to build such a tool, but it, it's going to take a lot of time. It's going to take a lot of support, right? Like, yeah, we do collect funding, by the way. Um, so, um, yeah, it is going to take some work and, uh, the definition of precision in recall, again, it depends, you know, it depends on people we speak to and so on. So uh, there are a lot of things to think about when it comes to uh, composition. And then analysis, right? 
uh, any fans of Madagascar movie? And <laughs> so literally, Kowalski, what's the analysis, right? Literally, that's what we do right now. ASA tool, what's the analysis? <laughs> and then the SCA tool spits, spits out some analysis, right? Like, like all evidence indicates there is an S bomb, there is a C bomb, there is an ML bomb, and then here is a result for you. That, that's it, right? Uh, is that analysis? I don't know, because, uh, as a user, you had no control over what Kowalski did, right? Like, you are just asking and the guy is like, the tool is like spitting out some report for you. And, uh, and then you have to use that report to use, yeah, b to build uh, security posture dashboards and so on and so on. And uh, we wanted to rethink this analysis phase and give the control back to the user, right? As a, as a user, like you could be a developer or an app sec. It'll be nice if the, the developers or the apps that could actually dictate what sort of analysis they need, right? What is it they're looking for from DevScan, from, 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 from an SCA tool and, and so on. I'll take a small break here. Any questions? Any thoughts? Uh, any, anything? Sorry? <laughs> Just report the situation. Like, Kowalski report the situation. Report the situation. <laughs> Stop, analysis. Stop analysis. Just report the situation and, and so on. That's uh, yeah. That's nice. Like uh, yeah, I would actually translate it to yeah. Uh, focus on the inventory. Don't worry too much about analysis and and, and so on. Very very nice. Um, so in case of DevScan version six. Uh, sorry. Uh, in terms of DevScan version six. Okay, these are the areas we are thinking. Right, like handing over that control to the end user, um, it'll make the the tool more verbose, more difficult to use. But we believe it is time that we start exposing these advanced users because we want to make uh, supply chains research, vulnerability research for supply chain issues a real thing. Right, we don't have many tools. We only have basic SCA tools right now that take the package name, look up a vulnerability database, here is a CVE for you. But we want to empower users to do more advanced uh, uh, things and, and, and so on. So uh, beginning with configurability. So you will be able to configure whether depth scan should go deeper or broader or how deeper, how many layers should we traverse, how many layers should we grow broader, Software layer, library layer, container layers, and, and, and so on. So we will expose advanced configurability options. There'll be, of course, defaults. So yeah, DevScan, if and I, I don't care. It'll give you results. But then you can really uh, uh, nail down kind of to uh, the exact analysis you want the, uh, the software. Then lifecycle analysis. So we can ask DevScan version 6 to scan the app before it builds, and then automatically build the app, scan the app after you build, and then map out the changes in composition, map out how the vulnerabilities are changing, evolving, and, and so on. So DevScan will do all of those work, prepare a much detailed uh, report, in again, in Cyclone DX format, so there's no lock-in or anything. And you can use that information to prioritize, because some bugs are easier to fix before you build, during the development phase, but some bugs are important because they are part of the distributed build and, and so on. So the, depending on the organization, you can have, uh, you know, uh, your own prioritization logic. And uh, we are anticipating, you know, the, the ASPM companies who currently uh, use our tool. Yeah, they will see uh, big uh, benefits, improvements. Uh, then reachability algorithm. So um, show of hands, how many people know the, the exact reachability algorithms used by their vendor, offered by their vendor, the names, how it works. Uh, okay, it's uh, it's 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 actually a shame that uh, there isn't a fixed definition for reachability analysis, even though there is actually a definition of uh, reachability in in academia, right? Every, every vendor comes up with their own definition and they, they try to do it and so on. In case of uh, a depth scan, uh, we do what is called as forward reachability analysis, which is 
from source to sync. So we identify all the entry points to the application, and then we try to plot the data flows of the possible paths and somebody operating externally might take to reach a specific vulnerability and, and so on. And uh, we are now adding two more algorithms. Uh, tagged forward reachability is uh, when your application has a lot, lots and lots of entry points, you can exactly specify here are the kind of entry points we are interested in. And you can describe that with English tags, okay? Uh, I wish I had more time to explain, but uh, yeah, we can publish stuff over time. And, and endpoint reachability is if your application has a lot of API endpoints, but out of it you only focus on a specific slash admin endpoint, you can say depths can give me reachable CVEs only from that endpoint. And depth can will do all the things uh, it has to do uh, to do that and, 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 and so on. So I think uh, I will take a pause here. Uh, I can spend the next one minute to show any technical demo or maybe we can spend more time on this particular slide. Demo, awesome. Okay, uh, you guys asked for it. Um, Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so what I have here is uh, 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 a dependency track. It's a, it's a fairly large, complex Java application, right? So it has a lot of jar files, dot Java files, dot class files. Uh, it's simply too difficult for even humans to basically understand what's going on. So, so, so it's a pro project that's in development for 10 years, right? Uh, you can't simply grab your way to get findings. There is just too many stuff going on. SaaS tools won't work. Uh, but uh, depth scan will give you reachable results already with version 5 and then version 6. Uh, it'll be super cool. And uh, I, what I want to show you is how we do that, how DepScan does that, right? And in fact, we will expose that as a feature in version six called interactive analysis. But I'm going to now show you uh, like a like a yeah, hacky version of the same, which I call Chennai. Okay, it, it stands for Chen, not AI, because most people say this is AI, but uh, no, this is just static analysis. Three people are working hard to implement all of these things. It's our, it's our knowledge and, and so on. So what we came up with is firstly an intermediate representation that is a superset of an SPOM uh, and with, which is purpose built for semantic analysis. So uh, if you guys are used to AST, abstract syntax tree, which is for syntax. Which is, so syntax is like spell checker. You can imagine this is optimized for grammar checks, not spell checks, so semantics, and, and, and so on. The benefit of this intermediate representation is it makes it very easy to analyze, understand the whole thing, like the whole whole, whole end-to-end experience of software. So as soon as I imported the project, uh, yeah, I, I, I get the, uh, the summary that yeah, this project has these many files, these many methods, and so on very quickly. If I say, okay, show me the files that are in this application, I get the files. Uh, things like show me the methods in this application. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's showing like this, but um, because of the font, I think, yeah, it's trying to use the full uh, view, but um, there are products like CodeQL, even, even some group that allows you to query and so on, but it requires the users to actually know what they're querying for. You have to write the queries, you have to know about the application and, and so on. But I can see uh, we are out of time, I think she's already here. So what I'm now going to do is, I don't have any time, just show me the reachable results, right? Um, at this point, I'm not telling anything about dependency track. I'm not telling this is a Java application, it has this, it has this library, right? What the tool can do is figure out everything like a human being, okay? Still not AI, this is just, Static analysis, this is a live demo. I did it real time. You can see how fast this is. Good luck getting this performance with any SAS tool, right? So let's take one example. Here it says there is a policy UUID, okay, that is an API parameter 
that can be used to reach this sink. And then it plots the whole data flow. It says this is the policy UID, and then notice that the, the, the data is par traversing across libraries, and as it scans the application, it semantically starts tagging what is the purpose of this method. Right here it says this method is doing something related to web and service calls and so on. It tries to build up that knowledge on the fly. Again, not AI, static analysis. And it uses that knowledge it computes to further improve the results. Uh, if I could quickly see one more example where, okay, here it says this flow has mitigations in place. So what does it mean? It is able to see that the input parameter is passing via a validation function. But at this point, the tool doesn't know whether the validation is good enough as per the organization standard. So it is asking the user for uh, for some help and so on. So uh, this is Chennai, this is work in progress, but uh, DevScan version six, which will come out end of this year, will use a lot of cool techniques. It will do real world reachability analysis. You can basically scan whatever applications you have got. We will give you high quality uh, results and thank you so much.